Hi, everyone. Um, it is the Easy Sunday Sew Along with Georgina Lewis, and we're doing the Georgie Girl Sew Along uh, series. We're in the third series, and we've talked about sewing the quilt and making some of the accessories that go in the complete bedroom. Now, when we started this bedroom, we or what we started this quilt rather, um, the quilt is designed by Linda and Carl Sullivan. It was done in Kate Fawcett fabrics. And we have, in the first two sessions, we talked about cutting all the fabrics, label, labeling them all. We talked about laying them out last week on the board, which I have a design wall behind me, and then substituting some fabrics. So some of the fabrics you see up here are in a different order, and they've been substituted. And you'll need to go to the uh, Easy Sunday Sew Along series to find out what I've done behind me and why. But tonight we're going to talk about the third week of the series and where you should be in this progress. I'm going to give you some homework assignments. And we're just about ready to sew this together. The other thing we're going to talk about tonight is the accessories. So when we started the Easy Sunday, right, we talked about having a complete bedroom set, having the pillow sham to match the quilt, the jelly roll rug, the tuffet, and accessory pillows. And I just want to thank, before we get started, some of the people that have helped me with this whole complete bedroom set. It's like cloning myself. I've been so lucky to have them um, help participate. And that was Roberta Leonard, the jelly roll queen. She's uh, with Oso Sally. And I'm going to be talking about where you can get this kit tonight. I'm going to show you the surprise that she made us. Then, of course, in week one, I talked about the tuffet. And that was PJ Cartwright with the Tuffet Lady. And she makes a ton of tuffets. And I talked about the layout of the tuffet and the fabric. Then my girlfriend in Portland, Jan Dandeman, she does my pillows for me. So I create these awesome pillows and she turns around and makes them. And it's wonderful. And so I'm gonna be showing you those pillows. Uh, we had done a series before where I went through the pillows, but the session was blurry. And so a lot of people ask me to redo that. So we're gonna talk about that tonight. On my board, on my design board, you're going to see the new quilt that I'm starting to sew that we saw at market last week. And I've put in some of Cave's new, I've done my Cave's batiks and some of his new artisans. Isn't that lovely? I love that batik. And um, today we spent cutting it. And of course, it's going to be all um, half quarter square, so it's still cut further from here. But we're just trying to lay it out. Here's another one. Isn't that just wonderful? Look at this, look at this, isn't that gorgeous? So we're just trying to lay this out today, kind of what goes together, and then um, set a square split again, and then sew it together. So I'm gonna talk about this at the end of the session tonight. And there's also pictures of this on the sew along wall, the Kate quilt support group wall, the fan group, and also the boutique and artisan project wall. So go to Facebook, join, follow along. Okay. So before we get into all these wonderful accessories that complete your bedroom set or even your guest bedroom, let's talk about where we are with this easy Sunday behind me. So first thing you should have is you should have your pattern. It's a free pattern. You can download this at the Petting Fabric website. So if you go to pettingfabric.com, you'll look for this kit. You'll see it's sold out, but that's okay. Over to the left or the right of the screen, you'll see download this PDF. And you can click on this and download this PDF and you can sew along with us. It has all the fabrics, and what, you, what I suggest you do um, is to find the fabrics that you wanna use and mark them all, and then you'll be able to follow along the instructions by marking the letters appropriately. Or if you're gonna mix it up like we did in last week's session, you can watch that, and I'll tell you how to do that. Now, one of the key things that we talked about last week, and we talked about the directional fabric, and we talked about sewing on our purple squares. Okay, so we should have purple squares behind. I'll show them to you behind me. So by this point, you should have sewn on the purple corners opposite like this of your non-directional fabric. Now this one you might consider to be directional, but I went ahead and sewed on the corners of all my non-directional fabric. Like the raked pumpkin. Okay, so now when, what I suggest you do is that you sew these purple squares on and Jan has gone onto the wall a couple weeks ago when I was traveling and posted for you 
which fabrics we consider to be directional and which fabrics we consider to just be regular. And so, it, you know, you can do your quilt any way you want. So if you, this doesn't matter to you, don't worry about it. But if you are, you know, like me, a little OCD, and you want to have your fabrics a certain way, and I'll look, when you look at the quilt, you know, you want it to be uh, uniformed, then you're gonna care about the direction of your flowers and some of your lines and your squares. And so for me, I turned around and laid it all out and I substituted some, some fabrics and I'm not totally sold on how I'm laying it out yet. I'm, but I have gone ahead and sewed on my squares so I can get a vision for that. Okay, so when you're putting this quilt together, let me back up for you a little. <laughs> My squeaky chair. All right, so on this quilt, what you, you can kind of see how the point of the blue comes down and then it goes back up. And I put this blue here to make it stand out so you can really see it on the, t on the computer screen and so along screen. So this comes down and goes back up. And it's really important that you pay attention. It's very subtle in this pattern, but as the points come together, you want your purple corners to come together. It's real obvious on this raked pumpkin. See this right here? And it's really obvious that these two are put together. So that means these rows here, the purple's gonna be in the right corner. And by the time I get to the raked pumpkin, which is the bottom of this point, then I'm gonna switch it and put the purples on the left corner. So that's gonna make a big difference if I'm not paying attention and I sew on a purple square onto this flower, the stem could be sideways. And that's okay, maybe you don't care, uh, but if you do care and if it matters to you, you're gonna want to lay out your quilt after you sew the purple corners on the non-directionals first. We covered that in detail last week. And then you're gonna fill in your directional fabric and you're gonna lay them out. I put this here so that it looks like the flower is together. So when I sew that together, it's gonna to come together nicely. And so I'm gonna place a pin right here at the top because these are gonna be my two corners for the directional fabric. So as of last week, we talked about this and today you should have your purple corners on. You should have laid out your directional fabrics like so. You should have sewn your purple corners on the appropriate squares for this. Now you're ready to sew it together. So this week, from this week to next week, if you start sewing all your rows together and you have it laid out in the coordinating colors that you want, then you're gonna be ready to bind it and quilt it. So when we come together next week, I'm gonna do Thanksgiving week here in the United States and I'm going to skip that week for this step, but we're gonna talk more in detail about the accessories like the rug, because we've already talked about the pillow and the tuffets once the so it in detail in the first session um and tonight we're talking about the pillows in detail and then the rod next week and then the following we should have the whole thing together okay so let's talk about this we have the um try not to sweep my chair for you we have put together we're start we're finishing the quilt we've talked about this tuffet and for everyone who's new tonight um let me show you the tuffet real quick Pull this baby up. And we talked about the tuffet. And we talked about the dominant pumpkin. And then, of course, the lines of the tuffet. And so we want to really keep this pattern flowing and pick that main piece. The back of this tuffet has the four pumpkins. That's on loan to me until the session is over from PJ. And I really appreciate that. So let's talk about these pillows and then we're going to talk briefly about the rug. The pillows are amazing. Now I did this session once before and it was very blurry. So I apologize to those of you who weren't able to see it that well. And tonight we're going to go re-record this. We're going to go to it in detail. So when you cut your fabric, you should have remnants left over. And I think based on how you cut your, if you fussy cut, your easy Sunday from the kit you bought, you may not have enough scraps to do some of these things. That's okay. If you want more fabric on Oso Sally's website, that's ososally.com, 
She has fabric packs that you can buy to get you more fabric to make all these items. But let's talk about sizes and let's talk about the scraps that you do have and what you need. Because we talked about this in detail before. For the tuffet, you're gonna need four sections put together of 16 fabrics. They're one and a half to two inches wide. One half is very tight. You could do it technically with the tuffet pattern, um, but you probably want to go one and three quarters inch or two inches. And you're going to need 22 inch strips. So that's half of the width of a fabric. 16 of those four times or full width strips twice or 16 of each set because these are four sections of the tuffet you put together. And here's what I'm going to tell you. It doesn't matter the order of your fabrics in that tuffet. I go into detail about that in the first session, but it does matter on the, the, tip, the button that you put on that tuffet and then rounding that with certain fabrics to always be in the same spot on the four sections so it looks really rounded. So go watch that video. Now let's talk about the pillows, which I love. So we have two pillows here to talk about. One is this accent pillow, and this accent pillow was done with the Westie. So this is the Westie star variation and the Westie tool, and this helps you lay it out. This gives you the pattern, and we have that at um, the petting fabric was with these two patterns in a set to make this pillow. And this pillow is got the purple accent here. See the purple? So if you come up close right in here, I'm gonna hold that up close to the camera. There's a star right there. So let me hold that up close. Isn't that cool? That's a cool star. It's hard to see sometimes on the camera, but it's really, really great in person. Like your eye goes right to it because Jan made this and did this Westie star pillow with the purple fabric as my accent. And it talks about one accent. She also did the back here in one of these fabrics that we use on the Easy Sunday. And that's just a great little accent pillow. So you'll want to use your scraps to make this. You'll see there's some backing fabric here that you can use as your border, okay? And then all these strips, require you to have two inches. So you need two inch strip. They're folded over into one inch strip sections, press, and then if you really, you know, want to pay attention is after you weave this, you'll want to press some um, interface, one-sided fusible interface on the back of this. It's called Shape Flex, and that will hold all of this in place for you. Okay. That's the accent pillow. Let's talk about your pillow sham. I'm gonna give you some big hints here. This is a beautiful, beautiful pillow sham. Now, she made me two of these, and I had it hanging before behind me in one of the videos. Look at this woven pillow sham. And how, you know, she was very kind to allow me to dictate the color scheme that I wanted for this pillow. Um, it does not follow the pattern, just like the tuffet. I changed up the pattern sequence of, of fabric. But this particular pillow does darker on the top and then it goes to lighter fabrics in this corner. And I really love that about the weaving that she did. Now, I'm gonna show you the whole pillow. We're gonna talk about how she made it and then we'll talk about the size of the pillow. Okay, so the back of this pillow sham, isn't that lovely? That is just wonderful. And it may be hard to see but she put some buttons on here for me and a beautiful little binding. Isn't that lovely? So she overlaps this section and then just finish it off with a nice binding. She um, quilted this. I'm gonna hold it up close to the camera. She quilted in such a way that the squiggle encased fabric just popped. Let me show you that. Isn't that great? I don't know if you can see how she long armed that but it's gorgeous and then okay so i have a pretty large pillow in this pillow sham 
And it says that a standard pillow sham, so it's not a pillowcase that you sleep on. This is a decorative pillow. You should have two of them at the top of your bed. Every time you make a quilt, you want to make sure you have really cool matching pillow shams at the top. It's kind of like going outside without lipstick, right? You don't have to have makeup on, but you at least want to have lipstick on. And that's the same thing with our quilt. We want to make sure that we have matching cute little pillow shams at the top. Okay, this pillow sham, if you were to Google this, it would tell you that a standard pillow sham should be made in 25, 26 lengths. Well, the width of the fabric is 44. And look at this. There's a lot of extra, look at that. See, there's a lot of extra space inside the pillow. Plus, I have a large pillow in here. Like this is a full, firm, foam pillow to try to fill up this space. So I was thinking, and she and I were talking about this, we believe that what you could do is you could cut strips that were 19 by 25. And if you did that and you got a softer pillow, um, it would fit just nicely in your pillow sham. No one's gonna notice an inch difference than what the World Wide Web tells you is the standard, but you'll be able to use a full width of fabric for both sections, for the 19 inch and the 25 inch because 19 plus 25 is 44, which is the width of our fabric. So I think you should focus on that. You are gonna need two inch strips, and you're gonna obviously need 19 inches of those 26 strips, because you have a 26 width here. So you're gonna need 26 two inch strips. And you can repeat some fabrics in here, because there's only 22, that come in Easy Sunday. So once you have those cut, and everyone should have enough to make either a tuffet or one of the pillow shams, and then you can get the extra fabric from Osa Sally if you want to make two. But what you're going to want to do is take these strips. You're going to want to fold them and press them down into exactly one inch strip width. You see maybe the yellow that shows up real nice and bright on there. Then when you are in Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, you should have learned, or kindergarten, and uh, back when I was young, they probably don't do that today, but what we did was we learned how to weave with the cartoons out of the newspaper. Um, and we, you're just gonna weave it in and out. You're gonna have to pin it down to a board. The directions are similar, to the Westy pattern that you had to make the star pillow and how you prep the board and how you, you know, draw your line. But after you do that, you're gonna wanna weave them in and out. And you're gonna wanna weave it pretty tight, okay? And then after you weave this, then you're gonna, you know, sew or stitch uh, a base stitch on it to hold it all into place. You're gonna flip it over and you're gonna press that interface on it, the one-sided interface, the um, shape plus, and you'll get that at your local quilt shop and press that in and it'll lock this into place. Then if you want to, you could top stitch over some of this. That's totally up to you. You could embroider like a flower or something on here. That would be wonderful. Um, I may ship you my pillowcase, you could do that for me. But then we decided not to put a, you know, a binding or any kind of section in the middle here, we just sewed it together and we were ready to rock and roll. Okay, that is how you make this particular pillow sham. The two pillow shams for both sides of the bed, the accent pillow, and then I want everyone to know that when you get your bedroom set together, it's the week after Thanksgiving. So if you have not started yet, it is not too late to start on getting the downloadable pattern. You must have an Easy Sunday quilt. You must have at least one of these items made to match and take a picture in your bedroom and up close and far away, and you will be eligible to win this pillow that Dan, Jan made for us. Now, it doesn't come with the insert. It just is the cover to the pillow, but it is stunning. And this is our giveaway, and some of you guys have been watching every week to have a chance to win. Now, there is one more thing. I'm gonna be asking questions from the three videos 
this video and the first two videos that are going to be up on YouTube, and you're going to answer a question from the video that you watch in order to be eligible to win this amazing pillow cover. Okay, so let's get to the big surprise item of the evening. I'm going to set this aside over here, out of our way, and messing up my quilt for working so hard and diligently on today. And I'm going to show you this lovely rug. Look at that rug. Isn't that amazing? Let's put it here. All right, now, this isn't, this isn't it. There's another surprise. You're actually looking at the bottom of the rug. But look at the stunning colors. So Roberta did this for me and in a circular shape because I wanted circular, I didn't want oval. I love how Roberta's eyes to color just really flows. I love, she doesn't blend it uh, and mix it up. She progresses her colors. And then look at this stunning, stunning daisy right here. Isn't that gorgeous? I happen to know that G on the pattern. I don't ask me, I probably could tell you every single letter of, I've cut this kit so many times with my staff that I know the letters of this, each fabric over and over again. But I love it. It's really, really nice. And she starts as a circular shape, which is different than what you'll see on the World Wide Web. She's going to do a little video for us as part two next week. Tonight's just part one. I'm going to tell you the basics to get started on this and what and the prep work you're going to need to do. But before I do that, let me flip it over. Look at this. Roberta cut the flower out and put it in the middle of this rug. Isn't that the most adorable thing you've seen? It just sets this perfectly. I love this. So this is a great jelly roll rug in a circular design. And when you go to make yours, let me tell you some little tips. Um, first off, let me tell you before you cut, if, if you're starting new on this, quilt and you haven't gotten that far yet, H, the letter H is one of the quilts in here. It's a boutique. It's right here. This kind of orange one right here. It, so you'll see the blue and then the green blue and then this orange boutique and then this red and blue squiggle. That one is in two corners of this quilt, but there's a mistake on the pattern. So you possibly to choose not to use that fabric for the quilt and get some extra strips for your jelly roll out of that. So when you're looking at your pattern, let me point this out to you. I failed to do this last week, so I wanna make sure I don't forget to do that this week. Um, you will see in your color design here, the quilt. And this is, it says it's H, and then this says it's also H, these two corners. The flow of the pattern is different because when you look at the actual rows, the row to this, okay, this H is a blend of a couple of these rows in colors. So you'll have um, your orange and your blue and then your orange blue. And on this side, this H is a blend of all those colors, but you'll have extra fabric on some of these that you could use in that corner and that would match this pattern. Same thing down here. So then you could take your H fabric and use extra of that cut for the jelly roll rug. So what your homework assignment would be to get started on your jelly roll rug. There's three steps to making your jelly roll rug. One is prepping it. That's where you get the big ball of, um, you know, sewn bias sections. So in step one, you're going to have, you're going to do a bias binding on all of your strips, and your strips are two and a half inches. So you're going to do a bias binding on those. Once you get that done, and that's a lot of work, and you get all of this prep together and in a, in a ball, okay? You're going to sew it together in the order that you like and all of this fabric. Next week, what we're going to do is your homework assignment is we're gonna talk next week and Roberta's gonna do a video for us. If you wanna make this particular quilt, she's gonna talk about the guts of the jelly roll and I'm gonna show you that. She sent me a test 
very grateful. Let me show you this. So this is a set of the guts. That's what I call a premium set to the guts, okay? You have large wonder clips in here. Look how large that is. You have two large wonder clips. And then, okay, you're gonna have your finger guards, and then you're gonna have your fusible bias, okay? So this is fusible, double-sided fusible, right here. We should send you both of these. Now this is step two. So we're not gonna do this yet. This is stretchy. And so she's gonna show us in a video that I'm gonna have available for next week that you can watch on the wall, part of the class, on how to do this. And that she has some tricks to that. Now this also comes with a jelly roll pattern. I don't have it on my table, but that will walk you through the basic jelly roll rug. She does an advanced version. It's so she's gonna show some tricks to that, to going circular and also putting the flower on. Okay, wonderful. So that is our jelly roll rug. I'm gonna put all these pieces back together <clears throat> so I don't forget how they came. And so now let me just take, I took some notes when I talked to Roberta today. Um, and she's gonna do the video for us. She's gonna talk about the stretch of this. Okay, when she does, when she sews this together, she's going to show you how to do that. She's going to show you how to start the circle pattern. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. Pretty much third week, part three, we'll be sewing the rug together, which maybe we'll get the video and be able to do both of those if you want to move along pretty quickly. But after Thanksgiving, the first week in December, is if you want to catch up and sew at least your quilt and one of these items, You'll be eligible to win our contest for the pillow. And of course, you'll have to go back and watch some of the videos for some of the questions I have in the pillow. But then we're immediately going to jump into the Emily quilt, which is started down here. You saw me prepping this in the beginning. And I do want to show you, I put this board together. And I, and I do want to talk about that rule briefly. Um, so this is, you know, my take on some artesians and some batiks that came out, you know, in his line. There's four quilts we saw at market. They are the Nina, the Strip Stack, the Strip Search, and the uh, um, Emily. My daughter's name is Amelia, so I have to stop and think it's spelled just two letters opposite. So. Every shop that sponsors our group is putting together the four colorways, the peacock, the island, the um, citrus, and then the red. What is the red? I'll think of it as soon as the video is over. But as soon as those four, those are the four classics. Those are Cape's classic colors. So we have like a, a purple and a green, and then we have the peacock is purple, the island is green, the citrus is the yellow and then we have the red quilt so i can't believe uh case holic and i can't think of the name of that right now but um those are the four colorways that each one of those four quilts were made in at market every shop that's offering that is that's on our wall is also doing another spin of the quilt to give you a fifth colorway in one of case you know sets of fabrics so I want you to go check that out. That's gonna be starting in December. In, in addition to that, we are gonna do the Tippy Canoe. The Tippy Canoe in Tyler 2 is in his book. It's a fabulous quilt. It has the regimental stripe in it. It has the lilacs with the purpley, orange, um, blue, some raspberry, some black with purple polka dots. And Keith has done a different spin on the Ohio Star. So could you imagine this pillow sham that we talked about tonight in the Westy tool done with and the big form with the stars throughout and going with that quilt? That would be stunning. And we want to have that done hopefully before New Year's because with the stars and the fireworks at New Year's, it's a nice set to go together and to do your bedroom. And then also, you know, especially in the holidays, you have a lot of family and friends that come over and you want to change up your bedroom 
for the different holidays. I think that's pretty cool. Um, and then, of course, we're going to start on our spring quilt at the beginning of the year, the Mediterranean. And then some of these quilts that each shop is doing, I'll be featuring some of them. I'm going to try my best to make some of those other quilts in different colors and different colorways. So that concludes our session tonight. I want to thank everyone for joining and coming into our webinar series. If you have not been following along, let me just tell you, this is the part of the evening where we stop recording and I pull the computer close and I answer the questions on the wall. So if you've been joining us, all you need to do is click on the chat button and then as you sit there and chat questions, I'll be answering them. To get to the, not the live feed at Facebook, but the exact chat, you have to sign up through Zoom. And that link is at so celebrate, it's, sorry, that link is at so long with Georgie Girl. And that's a Facebook group. So I'm Georgina Lewis. Thank you for joining us. And I'll see you next week on Tuesday in November.